What's going on, everybody? Happy Tuesday. So, part two of the Millionaire Sports Car Zoom that went on, what was that, August of uh, 2021. If you guys missed the uh, part one video, uh, just go back to the videos, you'll see it. Or you could just skip right to it, scroll down in my description, and you can watch the whole hour-long conversation. It's basically like from like three minutes to like 15 or something like that. If you guys just want to see what we were talking about on here. So, appreciate everybody's support, the comments you guys made. I'm actually redoing the video because a lot of the comments that were made onto it. Because I want to hit a couple things onto it. Um, first off, I just want to say, you know... If it was a pump and dump or not, we're never going to know because nobody's ever going to admit to that to begin with. But what I can say is that regardless, this is not a market. <laughs> and this is my reasoning behind it. You have the stock market. You have federal regulations and laws that go into that. Same with the if you go stock market, NASDAQ, all this other stuff. You have all these rules, regs, and laws that are out there. For sports cards, there really is none. If you think about it, other than, hey, you know, if you're selling on this platform, you need to pay taxes, you can't shill bid, stuff like that there. But there's nothing out there that's like, you know, if you do this kind of stuff, you're going to get in trouble. Now, there might be some stuff like, oh, if you're embezzling money through sports cards or something, you can get yourself in trouble. But I'm not going off that tangent. I'm just saying, you know, where a lot of these guys get hit with insider trader stuff on the stock market, we really don't have stuff like that. Not saying that happened here, but I'm just pointing at the, you know, we don't have any kind of federal regulation and laws that specifically pertain to sports cards and stuff like that out there. Anybody that's been around for a while knows, you know, check shill bidding, all that other stuff. The other thing, I believe he brought up the word scheme, so either you guys call it either a Ponzi scheme or a pyramid scheme in a chat and stuff like that. You know, even if the initial 20 or 30 people um, that were in that small group chat to begin with, you know, say they were in it for the love of cards and all this stuff and they've been collecting and stuff like that there. To me, as soon as you make the comment... Um, bring your friends in that might have been collecting in the past, but have no cards right now. It, it kind of like threw me in a loop for something like that there, you know. And I think they stated, you know, what was it? Uh, your real big real estate tycoons, your sneaker guys, cannabis guys, your crypto guys. I, I forget what else was all said on to it. My thought is this, and I kind of see where everybody would think, you know, pyramid on this. Because if you put that initial group at the top of the pyramid... They're going to feed off everything that happens afterwards because even he said there was, what, third... Hold on, I wrote it down here. 36 people in the first Zoom that they brought in with them all. And it looked like, I think he said 27 started buying right after that Zoom because of uh, Gary V's passion. Well, I... I I kind of see where they went with that onto it because, you know, the guy's passion, whatever he does. I mean, I think everybody out there has passion and want to make money. I mean, some people have it more than others, of course. But when I think about that, so those say out of that 36, 27 bought into it, they start seeing money jump. They start telling their millionaire and big money friends out there. Eventually, you know, it starts widening how many people all got into this. And could there have been somewhere along the way that it wasn't the first, you know, people that started the Zoom or group chat thing that, you know, maybe unfolded four or five, you know, fold down to where groups like, hey, you know, we could corner this stuff. It's not regulated. Could have been. No idea onto it. But this actually, this video really well brings out the the light. And I believe Cage says it the most that he doesn't really come out and say it, but he points towards it that this is why the spike happened when it did. And if you look like where the National was at, where Gary V bought those 53 Topps Chrome LeBrons along with these other guys that bought a couple here and there, you start seeing the prices as he talked about. Right from National, now they're 1400 now they're 1700 You know, the next thing you know, they're $10,000 and stuff like that there. I know he says Gary V don't need the money, but as you guys said in the comments, if you bought 50 uh, of those and say you 10x your money you put into that, that's a lot of money. 
or even if you 5x, 3x, whatever it could be. I mean, that's a lot of money that you've made with it, and maybe you didn't know what you were, you know, your intent originally was something else, but it unfolds into being something else later down the road because you are going to have somebody out there that has what well, we've all been talking about, greed in that. That, you know, is going to be like, hey, let's buy all this up. Let's buy all this up. Control this. Control that. Um, but like I said, might not have been their initial thought on to it. But I still think that when you look at the timetable of this and you start seeing where the big, big part of the bubble is, it's, it's way after this. Well, not way after the video, but way after whenever they started doing all this stuff and they started introducing more people. Then people brought in people. The next people brought in more people. You know, again, was it good for the hobby itself? Yes. <laughs> I still hate the word market because we're not a market. It's a hobby. It always has been. I mean, are we going to start calling stamps a market and coins a market too? I mean, goodness gracious out there. Uh, I'm just looking at my notes because I know I've been jumping around on to here. But I know they were talking about some guys put like 10 million into it and stuff. That maybe that initial first 27 people, like roughly, we're just throwing numbers out there. 50, I know, was a low number, million in there, 100 million. I know Cage also comes out and asks them basically, or is there like an, oh man, we got in over our heads to go dump this stuff? Well, here's the thing on to it the initial people before the Zoom call might still be in it for a long run and holding and buying and selling and trading and all the other fun stuff. But you can't really speak for the people after that. Especially like, you know, I tell Bob to come to a Zoom meeting of 36 people. Bob goes out and tells six of his friends. And now those six friends, they tell five more or 12 more. And it trickles down. Those dudes might have already been dumping. So... People are dumping their cards, realistically. Let's just put it where it is. Now, I know this video was made in 2021, too. And we're talking about a year ago. People are dumping cards. Were they the original ones that were pumping them? Or are they now in the oh crap mode? I'm in over my head? Probably. Some people think it's going to hit back up to the top of that bubble, and I just don't see it happening. But again, that's my opinion. I know a couple of people in the chat thought, you know, that there was. There's a chance it'll go back up, but it, I don't think it'll ever hit, you know, what would that have been? 10, 20x on some cards? 10 to 20x? That's insane in just a short span. But again, like I said, a lot, all this stuff in here is my thoughts and opinion on to it because we sat there and people were trying to guess what caused this big bubble. Was it COVID? Was it Gary V starting off with what he was doing? Was it uh, Vegas Dave? Was it uh, Jeff Wilson? I, I forget. There was a bunch of theories out there on to it. And literally, it's all mixed together. But I think a big chunk of it was, you know, Gary V has a huge following out there. And there's a lot of people listening to him to go invest and do this and that and everything else. And once that chatter starts happening no matter what there's going to be a ripple effect onto it you know people never heard of gary v like me until that point you know are like huh let me check this out and look at it. by then i'm in it too late <laughs> that's the way i always look at it. if i'm not one of the the first round or second rounder i'm in too late i mean we all can't be a tom brady coming out being a stud last pick of the draft but you know later you get into it the less chance you really do have to make money but that's just my opinion onto it I really think they could have phrased that not as a dump question on to it, but I wish they would ask something like, do you guys realize that whenever you're saying you're going after, you know, what is it, like 2100 PSA 10 tops Chrome LeBrons are out there? You know, if that group there holds, say, 50% of it, do you understand it's like kind of like cornering the market in a way too? So if I hold these... That's less up for sale, and when one pops up and somebody's dying to get it, it's going to drive the price up because you're going to have competitor bidders or you know buyers out there that are going to want that card. But it, you know, there's always ripple effects, and no matter what we do out there, I for one, you know, 
I didn't like how some of the stuff was phrased and worded on it. It was kind of like, to me, like in safe mode or in the gray area where we stay in the gray area. It's not really direct out there. Um, I don't think, even if that initial group that went to the national, that who was that, Dan and uh, like Gary and whoever else that crew was, even if it was 10 people, it was probably originally you know designed it was like cool look what i picked up what you guys get and stuff like that but along the way as that group broadened and they brought in more and more and more people you got to figure they're not all going to be with the same mentality as that there's going to be people that have greed that are going to come in there and they want more money they got to make more oh man look at this these guys are making he dumped in 10 million and he's already made that back plus five million he's sitting on you know another eight million dollars in inventory and stuff like that uh just shocked me that this video has been out there for so long and as you can see i just popped up today 300 views it was a 295 when we did this yesterday that you know this didn't catch the eye of more people to where it was talked about that you know what led to the big bubble? Grand, everybody had their own opinion. I think a lot of that stuff all contributed, but if we had to pick a large percentage out, you know, when you have a high status out there, like of followers, I guess that's what it's called, followers, subscribers, or I don't know what you want to say out there, but people that, you know, uh, watch or read your post and stuff like that, I guess followers is right. But, um, you know, and you're considered an influencer out there, you know, whatever you do is going to influence what other people see and want to do, too. They see you spending big money. Well, maybe I could take a little bit out and put some money in and try to do the same thing. I, again, I never faulted Gary V with the stuff because anybody that was in it prior to 2020 made a ton of money doing this. If they knew and they sold in stages on it, you know, first you're like, man, this is way up high. I'm going to get rid of 20% because, you know, now I'm in nothing on these cards. Then you see it going up more. I'm going to get another 20% away. Um, I still do believe that anybody came in, I'm going to say June of 2020 and beyond, if they're still holding stuff at those high prices because they thought like that, <laughs> the Jordan that sold for like a million dollars was eventually going to be 1.5 million, it was not going to happen. Anybody that's been around for a while knew that. Just like that LeBron triple logo man patch. What was it? Two point four million, but it really sold for two million. But with the buyer's fee, it was like two point four million. I just don't see that realistically being a two million dollar card. Good for whoever pulled it and got that money because that's insane. That's a that's a game changer, life changer, whatever you want to say on to it. But eventually, I still see cards dipping down for about another year to where they'll kind of level out because once we get psa completely caught back up fanatics we start seeing how that goes about with uh producing tops because eventually they're going to get football and basketball on so it could really still change a lot more out there I can still recall, you know, what was it? You guys would probably know well, too. You know, there was times where we, we were solid for like three, four years. You knew what was going on. There wasn't much change. And then it was probably about 16, I would say, 2016. Man, things were changing all the time, especially as being a breaker. The way you were getting allocated product changed all the time. I'll tell you, it was just insane. And just, oh, now we got new parallels. If you want this, you got to get this. And everything else that went on out there. And just different things were liked about it. All right, guys. Hey, I appreciate your guys' comments on part one. Curious to see what you guys see in part two. Um, a lot of good comments out there. Because, like I said, I redid the video for today. Because uh, I wanted to hit some of the areas you guys were talked about. Mostly it was the pump and dump uh, Ponzi scheme. The, where's the other word I was looking for? Pyramid scheme you guys were talking about. Even though it could have could have been that way. And I think somewhere later down the road it did end up that way. It might not have been the original 5 to 10 guys in that chat. Um, you know, showing what they bought and stuff. 
But when you start bringing in other people, and what, like I said, the biggest catch to me was they might have collected in the past, but have no cards now. What's the matter if they have no cards now, or they have cards? That that just kind of really threw me into a loop just with that comment there. And it, it's where you start leading people to wonder what was the real meaning behind that. Uh, just to have, make sure I hit everything onto the recap piece, or if I didn't hit in the video... That's pretty much it, guys. But yeah, I figured you guys would like this. It was a little bit different of a video. Just due to the fact that it was somebody else's video that got to ask the hard questions out there and hear this story. And, you know, it kind of makes sense with the timetable. And when you start looking, you can go to any graph. Um, what is it? Sports card. What do I use? The vintage uh, price thing. You could use card ladder. You could use whatever Jeff Wilson's thing is, or whatever else is out there, alt and all that stuff. If you go back three years, you can kind of pinpoint where a lot of this stuff started happening at, especially you, when you're talking uh, 2021, that's when the, you know, the National came back after two years, too. So, really interesting overall. All right, guys, I've talked way too much this video. Appreciate it. See you guys next video.